Um, it's uh, a material getting warm or cold if we magnetize or demagnetize it. That's really cold. This might look like a simple metal reacting to a magnet, but what you're witnessing is a portal into the future of cooling technology. Beneath the surface of this strange reaction lies a hidden effect, something that defies our usual understanding of heat and magnetism. A solid piece of metal heats up without a flame and cools down without ice. It's called the magnetocaloric effect, and it may one day replace your refrigerator's compressor. No gas, no moving parts, just magnetic fields and an exotic element named gadolinium. So how does this mysterious process work? Let's find out. The strange behavior of gadolinium. Gadolinium isn't a household name, but it behaves like something out of science fiction. And at room temperature, it's not quite magnetic like iron, yet it's still attracted to strong magnets. This makes it paramagnetic. But here's where things get strange. When you move gadolinium into a magnetic field, its temperature increases. Take it out, and it cools down. No electricity, no external heat source, just movement in and out of a magnetic field. In a simple setup, a small piece of gadolinium is attached to a stick with a thermocouple, a device that measures temperature. Outside the magnet, the temperature reads about 60.6 .6 degrees. Slide it into the magnetic gap, and the temperature jumps up to 61.3 degrees. Leave it there, and it cools back down to room temperature. Pull it out again, and the temperature drops even further. This isn't just a trick. What's happening here is called the magnetocaloric effect. Gadolinium's atoms realign in the presence of a magnetic field, reducing their ability to vibrate freely. That change releases heat. Remove the field, and the material absorbs heat again. It's a cycle, one that hints at a new way to cool our world without chemicals or compressors. Why gadolinium heats and cools in a magnetic field. To understand this strange temperature shift, we need to look inside the atomic world of gadolinium. Every atom in a material has something called a magnetic moment like a tiny bar magnet. In gadolinium, these moments are normally pointing in random directions, especially when it's paramagnetic. But when you bring it close to a magnetic field, something dramatic happens. The magnetic field forces the moments to align. This alignment reduces the randomness, or entropy, of the material. And in physics, when entropy drops, energy has to go somewhere. That energy is released as heat, which is why the temperature of the gadolinium rises inside the magnetic field. The material gives off heat just by becoming more ordered. When you pull it away from the magnetic field, those moments scatter again. The entropy increases, and now gadolinium can absorb heat from its surroundings. That's why it cools down below its starting temperature. This back-and-forth shift in magnetic order is what makes the magnetocaloric effect so powerful and so promising. The key to this effect is temperature. Gadolinium's magic happens around 68 degrees, its Curie point, where it transitions from paramagnetic to ferromagnetic. That transition is where the temperature swings are strongest. The Curie point, where the magic happens. Every magnetic material has a breaking point, a temperature where its magnetic nature suddenly changes. For gadolinium, that point is around 68 degrees. It's called the Curie point. Below this temperature, gadolinium behaves like a ferromagnet. Its atomic magnetic moments line up and stay aligned, even without an external magnet. But just above this point, the structure shifts. The alignment breaks down, and it becomes paramagnetic, only attracted to magnets when one is nearby. This temperature zone is crucial for the magnetocaloric effect. Near the Curie point, even a small change in the magnetic field causes a large shift in atomic behavior. 
That's when the temperature changes become noticeable and useful. You can feel it. Press two pieces of cooled gadolinium together near a magnet, and they stick. Warm them slightly in your hand, and they fall apart. That delicate balance between two magnetic states is what makes gadolinium so special. It acts like a switch. On one side, it releases heat. On the other, it absorbs it. The closer you are to the Curie point, the stronger the effect. Drift too far, and the changes become weaker. It's this precise window that future cooling systems are trying to harness. Replacing compressors with magnets. Traditional refrigerators use a cycle of compressing and expanding gases like Freon to move heat. When gas is compressed, it heats up. When it expands, it cools down. This simple principle is what keeps our food cold and our air conditioners running. But there's a cost. Fluorocarbon gases can harm the atmosphere, and compressors require moving parts that wear out over time. Magnetic refrigeration offers a cleaner, quieter alternative. Instead of using gas, it uses the magnetocaloric effect. Imagine replacing the compressor with a magnet and the refrigerant gas with gadolinium. When gadolinium is placed in a magnetic field, it heats up. A heat exchanger pulls that heat away. Then, when the magnetic field is removed, the gadolinium cools down, cool enough to absorb heat from whatever you want to refrigerate. By repeating this cycle, magnet on, heat out, magnet off, cool in, you create a new kind of refrigeration system, one with no harmful chemicals, fewer moving parts, and the potential to reach much lower temperatures than conventional systems. Though still in the early stages of development, this concept is already proving that magnets might one day replace compressors and redefine the way we think about cooling. Now first, like always, be sure to hit the like button down below. It helps us out tremendously with the reach of this video. Thank you. Why it's not in your fridge yet? With all its promise, you might wonder, why hasn't magnetic refrigeration taken over yet? The answer lies in the limitations of current materials and technology. Gadolinium works best around 68 degrees, but real-world refrigeration needs to handle a wide range of temperatures. Outside its narrow operating window, gadolinium's magnetocaloric effect becomes weaker and the system loses efficiency. Another challenge is the size of the temperature change. In a single pass, Gadolinium only changes a few degrees. That's not enough for heavy-duty cooling unless you stack multiple stages together, which adds complexity and cost. Engineers are working on this, but it's still hard to match the cooling power of traditional compressors with just one magnetic cycle. Then there's the magnet itself. To create a strong enough magnetic field, you need powerful permanent magnets or electromagnets both of which can be expensive or energy-hungry. And while research is ongoing, finding materials that have stronger magnetocaloric effects at more useful temperatures remains a major goal. So while the science is sound and the idea is revolutionary, magnetic refrigeration still has some hurdles to clear. But each year, researchers move a little closer to turning this magnetic curiosity into a practical cooling solution. A glimpse into the future. Despite the current hurdles, magnetic refrigeration is slowly stepping out of the lab and into real-world prototypes. Scientists around the globe are experimenting with new materials, compounds that show stronger magnetocaloric effects at wider temperature ranges. Some are blending gadolinium with other elements to fine-tune the Curie point. Others are searching for entirely new alloys that could outperform gadolinium altogether. At the same time, engineers are developing more efficient ways to cycle magnets and transfer heat. Designs now use rotating wheels or sliding beds of magnetocaloric material that pass through magnetic fields repeatedly, mimicking the continuous cycle of a compressor. These systems are quieter, more compact, and potentially more energy efficient. If these innovations keep progressing, the next generation of refrigerators might run without gas, 
without noise, and without moving parts. Not just for homes, but for medical equipment, space missions, or ultra-cold scientific instruments. Anywhere clean and precise, cooling is critical. For now, magnetic refrigeration is still a niche experiment. But it's no longer just a theory. It's a working concept, inching closer to reality. And in a world increasingly focused on sustainability, this quiet, clean, and curious technology could one day become the standard we never imagined. The bigger picture, cooling without consequences. Refrigeration touches nearly every part of modern life, preserving food, storing medicine, cooling data centers, and keeping us comfortable. But behind that convenience lies a hidden cost. Traditional cooling relies heavily on fluorocarbon gases, which contribute to global warming and ozone depletion. Even small leaks over time add up, creating a silent environmental burden. Magnetic refrigeration offers a cleaner path forward. It uses no harmful gases, consumes less energy in theory, and generates less noise and mechanical wear. If scaled effectively, it could reduce our dependence on environmentally damaging coolants and create a new standard for sustainable temperature control. More than just a tech upgrade, this represents a shift in how we think about energy and your future. Using magnetic fields instead of mechanical pressure feels almost poetic. Less force, more finesse. It's not about overpowering the environment, but working with the fundamental forces that already exist. As climate change becomes more urgent, technologies like magnetic refrigeration gain greater importance. It's not just about inventing cool new machines, it's about reimagining the systems we rely on. So they're not only efficient, but also responsible. And that vision, though still forming, is closer now than ever before. Magnetic refrigeration isn't science fiction. It's science in motion, reshaping how we understand cooling itself. From the silent dance of atoms inside gadolinium to the powerful push of magnetic fields, this technology offers a new direction. It's not perfect yet, but the foundation has been laid. The noisy compressors and polluting gases we've accepted for decades might one day be replaced by a cleaner, quieter solution. What began as a strange reaction in a lab could evolve into a breakthrough for homes, hospitals, and even space. The question isn't if magnetic refrigeration will arrive. It's when and who will get there first.